Hello folks, this is George with Imaginomic, and in this video tutorial I'm going to show you how to use Portraiture for Video in Premiere Pro. After you install Portraiture for Video and opened up Premiere Pro, you should have a clip open in the timeline. You can, of course, have multiple clips on there, and I'll show you how to apply it to all the clips later, but right now you have to highlight the clip you want to apply it to. I've got some before and afters here stacked on top of each other so you'll be able to see the effects. But generally you click on a clip, come over to the effects panel, find video effects, open it up by clicking on the little small arrow, scroll down until you find Imaginomic, do the same thing, click on the arrow. Then you can either click and drag over to the clip or you can just double click which is a lot easier and it'll apply it to the selected highlighted clip. It'll show up over here in the effects control panel then as portraiture. As you can see by default, portraiture does a really good job to start with. We've tried to use the same algorithms and same paradigm that we had over in the Photoshop and Lightroom version of portraiture to give you good results just right out of the box. I'll show you how to use these controls over here later on, but Generally, right out of the box, it does a real good job. And we're looking at it in fit view, which on this 1920 by 1080 HD monitor here, you can see it's in the screen size here that I've got for the program monitor. So if we go up to 100%, you'll see that it's retaining that pore structure. And then again, that's another thing that Portraiture is famous for, is re retaining that pore structure, not destroying any of the detail in the eyes or eyebrows or hair or any of that helping to smooth the skin out without going overboard to get you that really natural look. And of course you can tweak it to your heart's content with the controls over here. Let's go back over to the fit view. I'm just going to start at the top up here and continue down on here to the bottom. To start with we've got smoothing and smoothing is just what it says. It starts out at 50% and what it does is it controls the amount of smoothing applied to the clip itself. So if we move it all the way up to 100%, it smooths it out a uh, little bit more. And as you notice, most of the controls in our plugins don't go overboard with things. Yeah, a lot of plugins, a lot of uh, stuff out there in Photoshop and so forth, you, you go up to a maximum amount. I mean, you really get a heavy application of something. But you can see it doesn't really even go overboard. You may even want that type of look. Maybe a video you're working on, you want some kind of a smooth, even look to it. And if we go all the way back down to a zero on there, it turns everything all the way off. So we're just going to set it back to its default settings of 50%. We're going to move on down here to the uniformity slider. We click on the little arrow to pop down the control here. You can either grab the numbers there and do the scrubby slider move back and forth, or you can come down in here and grab the little control dot, move it back and forth, or you can just double click on the number itself and put a value in there. What uniformity does is it basically evens out the tonality of the skin a little bit more. In other words, you have some dark and some light areas around the skin structure there. And what uniformity does is that it helps to kind of blend those areas together and make them a little bit uh, less noticeable. So if we move the uniformity slider all the way over on it, the effect on it is that it's going to blend everything together a little bit better. If we go all the way down with it, it's going to give a kind of a harsher look to it. I'm going to zoom in here because it's a very, very subtle thing that it does. See, I'm moving it back and forth, and you'll notice as I go down and up, you'll see those areas around the nose there are getting a little bit less contrasty there. If I go down, they're more contrasty as I come up. So that allows it to kind of get some of the harshness out of the image in there. Now we're going to move on down here into the threshold. Now threshold is the amount of smoothing and the amount of uniformity that's applied to it. We start out with a 60% value, and the higher we get it, the smoother it's going to get the skin on there. And it's again, it's not a real super noticeable effect because we're not letting you go real crazy overboard with it so that you're going to get some kind of real blurry effect on there, and it kind of keeps customer support down to where people are accidentally getting the control set wrong and then blaming it on the plug-in not working anymore. So with threshold, if we turn the threshold down on there, 
you know, it's an overall effect to where it doesn't really affect near as much of what the skin tones are on there. And it's a very, very, very subtle on it. So as we move up on it, you'll see the skin tones smooth out more. As we go down, you'll notice that the skin tones get a little bit less smooth. Very, very subtle movement there. And, and that's basically just a, adjusting the threshold of how much it's going to affect the overall image that you have in your clip. Generally 50%, 60% is a real good starting point on there. The portrait size here, what Imaginomic intended for this is that with small, medium, and large, basically small would be for like a 720p clip, medium would be for like a, a 1080 or a 2K clip, and large would be for like a larger clips like 4K. And again, it's going to vary because you can have a like a head shot we got here just a talking head so to speak shot here and if you go up into the large on it it's going to give a little bit more detail to the image itself just a little bit more detail if we go down into the small it's going to give a little bit less detail it's going to give a little bit more smoothing because it's based on the the content of the image and then the resolution of the clip so generally the rule of thumb is small is 720p Medium is 1080 or 2K clip, and large is a 4K clip on there. You can experiment with it and see what works best for you. Because just say if you had an upper body shot from the waist up and you were in medium, you're going to get a little bit different effect on the overall skin tones that are being worked on than you would that if you had it over in small. It's going to be a little bit less going on in small. So something that you'll have to experiment with, and you'll have to apply it to whatever your output is and whatever intended format that you're going to send it out to. Now we're going to get into the mass selection area down here. First, I'm going to close these guys down so they don't intrude down in there and wipe everything out. Click on the little arrow, open up the mass selection. We've got calculate mass, fuzziness, hue, saturation, luminance, and latitude. Now we're going to start off with this calculate mass button here, and there's two main purposes in there. One is as you come in and apply portraiture to a clip, by default, the settings are going to be here 150, 50, and 50 on hue, saturation, luminance, and latitude. And that may not get all the skin tones in there really good. So what you can do is you can pull a mask up here. I always prefer to use the black mask itself. And you'll see there's some areas in here, which are kind of some of the lighter areas, that there's some transparency values in there. Where you see total black, that means there's nothing selected but these areas are kind of a uh, you know a darker really a dark dark gray there so there's still some stuff selected but it's not getting everything so what you can do is just come over and click on calculate mask and you notice immediately it fills in all the values in there and it pulls up the skin tones and all and you'll get a little bit of a bleed over here in some of these areas like this but it's not anything to worry about because those are really transparent values there and it's not even going to show up on the actual clip itself when we bring it up. You can't even tell anything's been done to it. So we'll go back and show that black mask. And then we'll show what happens when you use the hue, saturation, and luminance. And that gives you the ability to tune the skin tones values based on these three values. So there, so if we move the, we can go all the way to zero and up to 200. And the reason Imagine I'm has got that in there is because of the range of values that they had over in the portraiture for stills is the same. So it's the same algorithms there. So you can fine tune the hue of the skin that's being selected there. And it's hard to really, when you're looking at mass, to really determine if you're getting skin or if you're not getting skin. Because you notice as I move it back and forth, it looks like, well, it looks like maybe some more there, some not some more there. So it's not something that you really worry about on a general image like this. It's when you have things like you may have some gels or you have some uh, lighting that's got a tint to it that's not really picking up stuff, you can use the hue value to go in there and set that. Generalize, when you click on that calculate mask, it's going to give you some good HSL, hue, saturation, and luminance values. On the saturation in there is mainly we want to select highly saturated pixels or we want to select pixels that are less saturated. And so you can see there, you can go from zero to basically all the way down on, on saturation, all the way up on saturation, and you'll get different masks on it. Again, the Calculate Mask does a good job of giving you overall of the three values by averaging them out. Luminance is brightness. That's all it is. If it's down, it's selecting the darker pixels, the darkest pixels in the skin tones. If it's all the way up, it's selecting the lightest pixels in the skin tones. So what you could do is you could notice here it's 
it's leaving out some of these darker areas, especially like in around the edge here and in the eyes and so forth. And that way it gives you the ability just to refine the mask a little bit further, especially if you've got some lighting that's varying back and forth from a you know dark to light and back. I'm going to go back and hit that old calculate mask and get it back up there. Then we got the latitude, and the latitude is all simple. Zero is nothing. That means nothing is selected all the way up to 100. That means all the pixels defined by hue, saturation, and luminance are being selected. Generally, for the average customer of Imaginomic out there, the simple thing is open up a clip, find a frame in there that looks derivative of the whole clip. In other words, it looks like it pretty much stays the same through in the whole clip you have there, and then just click on Calculate Mask. And that's all you got to do in most cases. We're going to turn off that black mask, go back to None. Now we're going to get into the Enhancements section. I'm going to close off the Mask selection and open up the Enhancements. To start with, Enable Enhancements by default is turned off. There's a little small box out here you have to check to turn it on. It must be on for Enhancements to work. In Enhancements, we have Use Mask, Warmth, Tint, Brightness, and Contrast. What is going on here is that you have the Use Mask at the top. What that means is that if it's set to 100%, it will only use the Skin Tones Mask. And the Skin Tones Mask, as I showed a little bit earlier, is the actual mask itself that's generated by your mask selection tools. So if it's set to 100%, it's going to use all the skin tones mask only. It's not going to use the rest of the frame. If it's set to zero, it'll use all of the frame. And any percent in between, it'll use that percent combined. Like it'll use 53% of the original frame, and then it'll be 47% of the mask. And it'll combine them together in there. So generally, you're going to leave it at 100% and only use it on the mask itself. But you do have the, the option of using any percentage in between or mask only or the full frame only. So with it turned on and with it set at 100%, we're just going to move the warmth up and show you. You notice immediately I've got it maxed out and you've got a real heavy orange tint there. We can click the reset parameters to bring it back to zero. Go the opposite way with it. I'm just sliding the, called the scrubby slider. They're just grabbing the value and just holding the left mouse button down and dragging it over. You notice now it's got a real subdued, kind of a higher key look there. I'm going to reset it back. You can also drop down, the little drop down there, and use the little control here, like this slider control, and move it back and forth. I generally just leave those closed because they're just cluttered up and they take up a lot of space. The tin itself, if you move to the right, you're going to get more yellow put into the image. If you move to the left, you're going to have more magenta come in there, and you can see that's very apparent. So a little thing you could say on this particular frame is that we could just add a few points of warmth, and then we could come in and just add a few points of yellow and give it a, a little bit more kind of a pleasing skin tone to it. Set these guys back to zero. The brightness on it is just going to control the brightness of the pixels of the mask on there. If we turn it down, it's going to darken them. If we go up, it's going to brighten them. And sometimes you can get just a little bit of like more lighting on the face there just simply by dialing in a few points of brightness. On the contrast, if we move it to the left to negative values, we're going to have a flat contrast. If we move it to the right, we're going to have a hard edge contrast. So I'll go up to the right on there, and you can see it's a real hard edge contrast. I go to the left, and now we have a flat contrast. So sometimes you might want to go in there and just, just kind of flatten it out just a little bit and give it more of a kind of a, a cartoon look there, and then use the brightness controls on there to kind of pull it up some, and then come back into the tint and add a little bit of yellow and a little bit of warmth in it, and then we get uh, a little bit more high-key look to it on there. So that gives you the ability to just control the skin tones because sometimes your lighting is not going to be perfect and instead of going in and trying to use all kind of complex masking and color controls and all in, inside of Premiere, you can just come in here and just use these that are available right here. So what I'm going to do here is show you how to apply portraiture to multiple clips at the same time. Let's just say you've got some settings in portraiture that you like and you want to apply it to more than one clip. So what you do is right click on the clip that has portraiture on it Select Copy, 
and then you select the other clips that you want to apply it to. In this case, just say we want to apply it to all the rest of them. I can just drag and rubber band across and select them. And then I want to shift click the clip that I has the original portraiture to it, which is this one right here, because if you don't, it'll apply it to it twice. And then I just right click on one of these clips, select paste attributes. When it comes up there, you'll see that by default, it shows that there's portraiture in there. It'll all automatically show whatever number of effects you have over there. You can select them based on what you have or deselect them. But you want to make sure that in effects, that's checked and then portraiture is checked on there. You click OK. And then now, if we go back to these clips themselves and look at them, we'll see that the clips here have portraiture applied to them and with the same exact settings on there.